So just a couple of weeks ago, Sony released the trailer for the new Madam Web movie. And I think I can speak on behalf of everybody on the internet when I say, Sony, you did it again. Way to go, pal. Gotta give it up. Great job. Next drink's on me. Keep up that hustle. Looking good. You go, champ. Hey, nice one. <laughs> this award, this one's for you. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. What the hell are you talking about? Madam Web is an upcoming Sony Spider-Man movie without Spider-Man. Uh, this comes after the first two Venom movies and the critically acclaimed global phenomenon, Morbius. Both characters originally appearing as Spider-Man villains and now part of Sony's cinematic Spider-Man universe without Spider-Man. Earlier this year, Sony also showed a trailer for the upcoming Kraven the Hunter movie, another Spider-Man villain in a universe, you guessed it, without Spider-Man. Morbius did not do great, or at least not as well as the studio would have hoped. And I think most people on the internet probably knew it was going to be bad, which is why it became such a meme. Nobody had any interest in seeing it, so all that hype and buzz was imaginary and facetious. And in one of the most brain-dead moves in film history, or at least one of the funniest, the studio re-released the movie around the fake hype and buzz to a measly $280,000. I'm putting a call out to everyone. We need to make that happen again. You know what? I'm craving some craving. Madam Web, more like Madam Five Tickets to Madam Web, please. I've been a huge Spider-Man fan since I was a kid, and I can barely imagine Kid Zack being excited for these movies. I even own this ugly Morbius toy, and I think my stupid little child brain would be confused why he's in a movie without Spider-Man. Outside of the Spider-Verse animated movies, Personally, I think the Sony Spider-Man movies are kind of a mess. Besides the movies mentioned earlier, there's also an El Muerto movie in development, who is a character I didn't even know existed until the movie was announced. And I guess is just a wrestler that Spider-Man fights at some point? Where's the Bonesaw movie? Bonesaw is ready! <laughs> I do that a lot. Oh my god. At one point, there was even going to be an Aunt May movie, which, as long as we're going 150% stupid, why stop at a movie about an old lady buying groceries? J. Jonah Jameson standalone film? Uh, yes please. A movie about Enrique, MJ's boss from the first Spider-Man movie? Yes, Enrique, okay, okay I, get I get you, and I want a movie about you. Let's get an Uncle Ben movie going. And not the rice. Maybe the rice. A Mr. Aziz movie, which is two and a half hours of him flipping a pizza? Well, don't mind if I take a tasty slice of that, please. A Whiplash-style movie about that one lady who sings the Spider-Man theme in Spider-Man 2? Why not? Might as well go full idiot mode. Not, not quite my tempo. Now, while I think making a movie about Spider-Man villains is a pretty inherently flawed concept, at least as a way to generate interest from fans, I think any idea can be spun into something good. Take Joker, for example. On a paper-thin surface level, Joker and the Sony movies have a couple of things in common, at least conceptually, but wildly different executions. Much like the Joker, Morbius, Venom, and Kraven are all villains of the most popular superheroes of all time, like the two most popular. The movies exist in a world where the superhero doesn't exist. At least not yet. They all serve as pseudo-origin stories for the iconic villains. Full disclosure, I'm not the biggest fan of Joker, okay? I said it. But I admire what the movie tries to do. Joker is more than a product, which is what the Sony movies kind of feel like. You could tell that... What was the director's name? Todd Howard? Todd Phillips seemed like he actually wanted to make the movie. There was a vision behind it, a drive. The Venom movies, Morbius, and from what it looks like, Craven all follow a very similar formula. Here, this is what Joker would look like if Sony owned Batman. Hello, my name is Joe Kerr. I am a scientist. Hello, Joe Kerr. I am your boss or friend or coworker or acquaintance. Okay, great. Goodbye. Talk to you later. Ah, oh no. I seem to have fallen into this vat of acid. Oh, this acid has changed me. 
Wow, I now have superpowers and can run on walls and stuff. Joe Kerr, I am your uncle or boss and I am jealous of your superpowers. I jumped in and also became a Joker. I'm another Joker. Joker 2. I'm the Joker, baby! <laughs> Joker 2, I have to stop you. If you want to stop me, you have to catch me. Okay, Joker 2, I have killed you, and now the movie is almost over. Hello, Joker. Who are you? I am Edward Nigma. Enigma. I'm, I'm Riddler. I, I'm the Riddler. Oh, okay. The movie is over now. Again, all of these movies feel like products, just picking some random character from Spider-Man and plugging them into the exact same formula every time. Come here. Got a secret for you. Come here. This is also the same formula for the MCU. Okay, I'm being a little unfair to the MCU. Despite being formulaic, I would say that every MCU movie is better than all of the Sony movies. But a good chunk of the MCU movies end with the heroes fighting a slightly different version of themselves and tonally feel kind of similar. Now while this works for the MCU, and generally I think the formula works better for heroes than villains, this is not what the Sony movies need, especially at a time when superhero movie fatigue has never been higher. I think these movies should be lower budget and experimental. As a moviegoer, I don't really want to watch these types of films. I'd rather see the 13 different Mattel multiverse movies in development. Will I watch the Magic 8-Ball movie? Absolutely. Uno ticket, por favor, to the Uno movie, because you know I'm seeing that. <laughs> uh, that's stupid. The differences between the Sony movies and the MCU movies goes a little deeper than that, too. At least some of the MCU projects feel like the voice of a passionate filmmaker. You know, like the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Um, other ones. When they don't, the movies usually lead to something bigger. Morbius tries to do this by including Michael Keaton's Vulture, but this is what he says. I'm not sure how I got here. It has to do with Spider-Man, I think. So your basis for building a cinematic universe is, I don't know why I'm here, maybe it's because of Spider-Man. What does Morbius have to do with Spider-Man in a universe where Spider-Man doesn't exist? Morbius doesn't even know who Spider-Man is! And I'd be willing to bet you tits to donuts that Rhino tease at the end of the Kraven trailer doesn't even happen till the last five minutes of the film, but it's most likely a post credit scene. It just comes off as desperate and pathetic. That being said, the draw for the movie shouldn't be a FOMO thing where you need to watch content in order to understand more content. The draw for the movie should be that it's a good movie! What? The MCU films definitely aren't perfect, and honestly, with a few exceptions, aren't even really for me. But I'd rather sit through two viewings of the entirety of Secret Invasion than watch Morbius again. I don't think this issue has been more apparent than it is with Kraven the Hunter. Unlike Morbius and Venom, who have been anti-heroes in the comics, Kraven has always just sort of been an awful dude. He's an asshole. If you didn't already know, Craven in the comics is an exotic animal hunter, and when he gets bored of hunting exotic animals, he moves on to superhumans like Spider-Man. So if you didn't think hunting rhinos, elephants, and lions was an inherently bad thing, you can probably admit murder is a bad thing. Beyond being an exotic animal hunter, Craven in the comics is also just a normal human, which is what makes him fighting Spider-Man so compelling. So what does the Craven movie do? Well. Number one, he's no longer an exotic animal hunter, which I get, audiences aren't going to be super sympathetic to that, but at least he's just a normal human that fights superhumans, right? No, now he has lion blood and has lion superpowers and hunts normal humans. The six of us, there's only one of you. Because I'm me, I'm different. I just have a different constitution, I have a different brain, I have a different heart, I have a different, you know, I get tiger blood, man. Winning! Fundamentally, if you take Spider-Man out of a Craven story, you kind of have to change the character. 
But if he's no longer an exotic animal hunter and no longer just a human, is it the same character? At that point, why not make a new character? Because now he's just sexy lion man that jumps off walls and does parkour. Now, without having seen the film, I can't say it's going to be bad. Maybe I will start craving some craven. But Sony's track record hasn't been exactly stellar, and I would say the trailer doesn't inspire a whole lot of confidence either. So, imaginary audience, let's workshop a different Craven movie. One that, at least I'd like a little bit better. Yeah, after 10 minutes, I finally made it to the premise of the video. <laughs> so, number one, much like used condom sender, island of 16-year-olds haver Jared Leto is not my first pick for Morbius, Aaron Taylor Johnson isn't my ideal casting for Craven either. He's just a little too sexy. <laughs> This is a wild pick, but Nick Offerman is honestly my ideal casting. He's great in The Last of Us, and boy howdy do I want to see him do an Eastern European accent. I don't know how well this would play, but Craven the Hunter should be an exotic animal hunter. It's okay to have your protagonist be an asshole. He can learn. He can grow throughout the movie. Also, this goes without saying, no lion's blood. Just make him a normal human. Audiences love rooting for an underdog, and it's more compelling when he's fighting superhumans. And he has to fight superhumans. Now you have a couple of options to go with. Option A is he hunts Spider-Man. Doesn't have to be Peter Parker, but maybe Kraven exists in a world with multiple Spideys through some multiversal shenanigans. I would love to see Kraven hunt the wackiest Spider-Man you can think of, and here are a few good pulls from the comics. T-Rex Spider-Man? Spiders Man, a sentient army of spiders that think they're Spider Man, Sum Sum Spider Man, Tokusatsu Spider Man. <laughs> Maybe this is even a world where Spider Gwen exists, and you can have Haley Steinfeld reprise her role from Spider Verse. Option B is you have Craven hunt a bunch of B, C, and D tier Spider Man villains. Let's see Craven hunt Big Wheel, Typeface, Plant Man. Video Man, The Wall, Hypno Hustler, or if you want him to fight exclusively animal villains, boy are there a lot. You could even say that there's an animal version of the Sinister Six for Craven to hunt. Some obvious ones are Rhino, Vulture, Lizard, and Scorpion, but did you know about Walrus and Kangaroo, both actual Spider-Man villains? There's also Grizzly, who is just a wrestler in a grizzly bear outfit, Iguana, who is... I guess different from Lizard, Stegron, a human Stegosaurus, Jackal, Puma, White Rabbit, Man Wolf, Frogman, Gibbon, Human Fly, and Squid. When Craven hunts, I want to see some Home Alone ass traps. I want to see planning, not just boring action scenes. Take advantage of Craven's unique abilities. He's supposed to be this amazing hunter. Let me see that. The movie has to end in a completely satisfying way. No universe setting up, no sequel bait, just a complete story. Show me Craven's journey to becoming an anti-hero. Listen, I'm not going to pretend I know better than the 8,000 underpaid writers working on the Craven movie, and maybe none of these ideas are as good as the one they've got, with Russell Crowe giving his third awful European accent in a row. What is with that? But movies are an art form, and... If all these movies are the same, they might as well have been written by AI, just taking little bits and pieces from everything else and trying to pass it off as something new. Hey, big shout out to everyone who watched my video, and I'll see you next time.